Lenny Tristano, 1919 to 1978, was one of the great jazz genius innovators of the 20th century. Among other things, Lenny was one of the pioneers of the cool school of jazz of the 1940s and 50s, made the first use of overtracking and audio recordings, conducted the first experiments in free jazz group playing, and pioneered the walking bass line style of jazz solo piano playing. Blind from the age of nine, Lenny was also among the first jazz educators to establish a complete system of teaching improvisation on all instruments, and had a thriving teaching studio in the New York City area until his death in 1978. Lenny's piano playing was the expression of a tremendous but relaxed spiritual power, daring harmonic and melodic elements, humor, and a shocking originality. His playing has influenced countless jazz pianists, including Bill Evans, Keith Jarrett, and Herbie Hancock. I first met Lenny when I just turned 15. I was studying at the Berklee College of Music in Boston, and I was in the library, and a, a lady came and sat across from me, and she had a copy of this new Tristano record, which you can see here, which was a very rare record. She had found it for 2 or $3 in some bin in Boston. And she was very excited because she was studying with Lenny. And at that time, I was very much looking for a teacher. And I had read about Lenny in a book called Jazz Masters of the 1950s. And I knew that he was teaching nearby where I was living on Long Island. So I asked her about Lenny, and she said he was a great guy, and he was a great teacher, and he was very interested in helping people uh, play jazz. So I decided I was going to call him up. So from the dorm at Berkeley, the first conversation I had with Lenny when I was 15 went like this. Hello, Mr. Tristano? Call me Lenny. I need help. What kind of help do you need, David? I need pianistic help. This is what you do. When you get back from Berkeley, you come and see me. I live in Queens. And you can come here and play for me, and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to rip you off, and you can tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> that was the first conversation I had with Lenny, but it wasn't the last. He was such a powerful figure in jazz and in education, and he had a whole scene of musicians studying around him, and it was a, uh, just an amazing experience to be in regular contact with a genius at this level. The first thing we notice about Lenny's playing is this powerful walking bass line. So the walking bass line is primarily a quarter note line, low down on the piano. You can go real low with this bass line. On a big piano like this, it really has a huge sound. It's almost all quarter notes, although there are other things you can do to change it. And the idea is that we're making a, a melodic connection between the roots of the chords. On the Walking Bass Line Clinic, we get into this quite extensively. But you're trying to make a simple melody, connecting the roots of the chords as a first way of doing it. Once you learn how to do the roots of the chords, you can use other elements and other degrees of the chord. this walking bass line, we're going to add a primary eighth note improv line. One of the real secrets of jazz improvisation is that the basic kind of line for improvisation, in this case on the right hand, is a swing eighth line. And Lenny used the swing eighth line as a kind of a linchpin that brought everything together. The swing eighth line goes like this. New York, 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 New York. This is the primary line in improv, and Lenny uses it as a primary jumping off point, and then he'll build the intensity and come back to it. Now, 
another ele element that Lenny uses to counter this single note line is what we call right hand chord clusters. And these chord clusters usually have anywhere from three to five notes, oftentimes four. And what Lenny's doing is he's creating a melody with the top note of the cluster. the chord sequence of what is this thing called love like it was a merry-go-round in your head. Lenny would often bring out the top note and the bottom note of the clusters. And that sounds like a big band. two basic things would create a balance. The single note line, and the clusters. Now, when Lenny wanted to ramp the sound up and the volume and the intensity, he would sometimes bring in triplet lines. And you know if you've seen any of these classes that the triplets is Tennessee. Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. and then maybe back to the eighth notes. Clusters. And he's gonna switch the intensity of these elements. Maybe back to the single notes. There's a little master controller in your head when you're improvising that tells you exactly in the moment which element to use. And basically we're looking to control the intensity of the creation. Here we start with the single note lines, eighth notes. Maybe we bring some triplets. Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. Maybe some clusters. More clusters. All right. Now, in addition to some of these elements, Lenny also liked to play octave unison lines in the two hands. So Lenny would often do it an octave apart. That sounded like this. And sometimes you can do it two octaves apart. It has a kind of a brighter sound or a bigger sound. And often these unison lines are used as connectors between different parts of the improvisation. Another thing we'll hear in Lenny's playing that's very unique and interesting is kind of a musical mantra, where he'll take one idea and he'll keep turning it around, and in the moment, as he turns it around, the time shifts in an Einsteinian way where it goes across the bar in interesting ways. And so that would sound something like this, and we'll hear this in some of Lenny's solo playing. Like a mantra. Anybody can write in and tell me what he's doing rhythmically, I'd be happy to hear. I don't have the slightest idea. Didn't do, do, didn't do, you didn't do, you 
dude. It's like a figure that repeats. Maybe some clusters. Okay, and then the other element I wanted to tell you about are two-hand spread voicings done in rhythmic groups. So Lenny liked this particular rhythm, uh, this chord. C, E, A, D, G, C. And he would often use that in groups of three. Chromatically going down. Tennessee, Tennessee. Sometimes you can go up. Sometimes you can go two octaves. Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. That's real strong. Lenny was such a strong person. As most of you know, he was blind. And he had a very difficult life in many ways. And yet he was all of our teachers and all of our guru. And he would give us all advice on all aspects of music and living. And he was able to do that in spite of his handicaps. And it was such a powerful experience to be in his presence. He had a, a real enlightened type of a vibe that he gave off. And he would often talk to us about things like meditation and, and how you keep your mind quiet while you're creating. He was really on top of all those uh, multi-dimensional aspects of improvisation. It was way ahead of his time. Mm -hmm.